we can dive into this. Good having all you guys here, wherever you are around the world. Thank you for showing up today. We've got a lot in store today to help us all have fun while we are at home in photography. So right away, let me just jump right on into this. I want to say thank you for your time. I know we are going through a different thing in our life right now, but this won't last forever. And when it's over, we are going to really thrive. So hopefully what you learn here today is going to help you thrive as we go forward. All right, let's see, let me get you going here. There we are. First and foremost, welcome to everyone. Thank you for your time here on a, on a Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday night, wherever you are in the world. Just glad to have you guys here. April 28th, 2020. Glad to be here in a big, big way. For those who don't know, my name is Matthew Jordan Smith. I've been a photographer now for 35 years. Sounds weird to say that, but uh, this year is my anniversary year as a photographer where I began my career. It's also my birthday month. I had a birthday last, last week, actually, and um, I'll go into that later on, but it's just great to be able to share photography with you guys and the joy of photography. So I live in Tokyo. I'm from America, from New York originally, um, born in New York, raised in South Carolina, back to New York to start my career 35 years ago. And then I moved to Japan about uh, four years ago. But I've been coming here for a long time, but I've always loved this place. And this picture kind of sums it all up. I love this place because it's bustling all the time. Well, most of the time until recently, but you can walk out your door every single day and there's always something to do. There's always a great opportunity for photographers. This is one of my favorite areas to shoot. It's called Shibuya. It's the, the biggest uh, pedestrian crossing in the world. So I'm always shooting here. This is normally what it looks like. I play around with, with motion quite a bit. So here's some of the stuff I do when I'm not working. I'm out in the streets shooting experimenting. And I, I think even now while we're home, many of us are, are in a stay at home order right now or in a lockdown mode or quarantine mode. Even while you're home, you can still experiment. And that's when it's fun in photography. So I'm going to share a lot about that today. I'm going to challenge all of you today to go and take this stuff and try it out. So all these images I just showed these last few have all been shot in Shibuya. It's an amazing place to shoot. I love playing with, with making one person stand out in a crowd. And I love also showing the crowd. I never thought in a million years this place would be empty. But right now it is. And it's a very different place for photography. Of course, nobody's walking around, but if we could, you'd see a very different Tokyo today. It's April and in April, normally it's cherry blossom season. It happens at the, toward the beginning of April. And a few weeks ago, this was the scene here. It actually snowed in April uh, during the Sakura is what it's called in Japan, but the cherry blossom season. So this is what it looks like. And this is what it feels like. And when I say feel because Sometimes in photography, we, we experience something and we want to show that to the audience. But maybe the picture doesn't feel the same way. But even if it doesn't, as a photographer, you have license to make it feel the way you want it to feel, the way you experience it. It is your point of view as a photographer. Now, I'm known for photographing celebrities. That's, that's what people know me for, for shooting celebrities like Oprah. She's one of the biggest celebrities in America. But it's funny, when I moved to Japan, not many people knew her and I was kind of shocked by that. But then it hit me. She's, she's not really a movie star. She's a TV personality and she's the biggest one in America. But in terms of other celebrities, like, like here we have Zendaya, who's a movie star, one of the younger ones now, and she's very popular. So everybody knows Zendaya around the world. And then there's Mandy Moore as well, also very, very well known. But I also shoot a lot of beauty as well. And I just love this stuff. 
it never gets old to me. Beauty is forever. And, and even today, as we live through this different time, you know, seeing everybody with a mask on, you're starting to see pictures of people with masks on everywhere. And that means you'll be seeing different types of ads going forward, or different types of, types of editorial going forward, maybe where the rest of the face is covered up, except for the eyes. That could be a good opportunity for a cosmetic company in the future. Who knows if that's what will be, but we are experiencing a new normal. I also do a lot of advertising and I've done a lot of covers in my career. It never gets old, but everything I've learned, I've learned by testing. And in 35 years, I've seen a lot of ups and downs in this industry. We can get through this. We will get through this. So stay strong, believe in your work and continue to shoot and practice as much as possible. You may have also seen my work in America's Next Top Model. I've shot for that show. Uh, it's still in syndication somewhere in the world. I still get checks every quarter from this show uh, going on now 10 years. So um, I was on the show like six or seven times as a judge and a guest photographer. But more than that, I love photography. I'm a Nikon ambassador. So I talk about photography to the world and share the joy of photography. And sometimes, you know, when we can, we talk in a live audience. So this is, you know, what I do sometimes when I'm in Vegas or in New York or at a convention, I'm talking about the joy of photography. Now we're doing it through Zoom, which is very popular right now because we can't see each other in person, but you can still get better at your photography. And I am so glad all of you are here today. Okay. That's my little intro. Now let's jump into today's training. Today is all about how to have fun in photography. I think this is important today more than ever because we're at a place where everybody is a little tense, um, a little uptight. So we got to take that away and put a little fun in what we love, photography. So let's get back to this picture of the Sakura, the cherry blossom season which happened a few weeks ago here. And it shocked everybody that we had snow on this day. This is reality. You know, um, this is actually one block from where I live. And I walk this lane all the time. This, this lane goes on for miles. So here we have Sakura, but there's no tourist in sight. There was none to be seen. And this is very different for this time of year. Normally you'd see thousands of people walking around enjoying Sakura season. And it was cold this day. And I wanted to show what it felt like to see the Sakura and the snow. In this picture, you see it a little bit, but you don't really get the feeling that I felt being out there. In this image, you do. You get the feeling, you get, you get the snow, all of that. I'll show you later on how I do that. But I love that now we have the ability to, to make a picture feel the way you feel when you are experiencing a moment. And for an artist, which I think photographers are, we have this, this ability to, to either document what's, what's happening in the moment the way it is, or take creative license and make it feel a certain way. Because when you walk out there, this is what it feels like, even though that may be the reality, it feels like that. And I want to show what it feels like for me so people can understand the joy of Sakura season. So this is how I do this. So here I have on one and I had the image here. And if you look to your right, you'll see this weather uh, uh, module here. And in the weather module, I can just go through and take control a little bit by just let me just go back there again for a second. I want you to see all of that. There we are. Okay. So now I'm going to go through. Here you have all the Sakura. Let's get my mouse over there. You see the guy on the bike. If you go in close, you'll see it is snowing. But I want to feel a certain way. So I'm going to go through and turn on my color enhancement. I can go through and show that and make it stronger. So here I can just go in, push my reds and I don't want to be red red but I want to bring out the pink more so I just want to get more life 
So here I'm adding a little saturation to that to make it come alive. So it feels the way it looks to me being out there. I can also add a little bit more of my color adjustment to give it a little bit more of a kick. That's what it feels like when you're out there. And now I can share that feeling. I'll hide that for a second. Now let's go and look toward the weather. How can I add more of that feeling of the snow? I love this part because in on one, I can go through and add as much snow or as little snow as I want. I love this weather app. I've never seen anything like this and I can change it to be exactly the way it felt for me as I was out in the snow taking this picture. This is a lot of fun. I love playing around with it. And if you've never used this part of On One, definitely dive in, check it out and play with this. It's a lot of fun. Take a sip of my coffee there. So this for me is a lot of fun. I enjoy diving in. You know, you can go in, you can make it as much or as little as you want. What I love about each of these modules is I can go through and change the slider on it. I can take it on or off. I can make it full or make it half percent or a quarter percent, anything you want it to be. It's totally up to you. You have creative license for how you want your image to feel. And that's a great feeling. Okay, then you can save your settings. You can go in and export it the way you want. And voila, you have your image. Okay, let's move on from here. So now let's dive into how you have fun at home because that's what we're dealing with today. So I mentioned last week, it was my birthday. And I've been home now. This is the eighth week where we've been home. And, you know, when you're in this moment, you can either just sit back and watch Netflix all day, or you can pull your camera out and get creative and start documenting each day. And that's been my self assignment to document what it feels like for me in this moment. I mean, April 21st was my birthday. And I want to document this birthday because it's like none other I've ever had before. So I put out my camera and went to work. So to walk outside, I'm wearing a mask. And being inside for a while, you start thinking, okay, do I need to shave really? <laughs> so sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I think about it. So I wanted to share what that felt like in this image. So here I am doing a series of self portraits. I put up my light, I put up my meter, I set up my, my background. So it's the setup and then I want to feel a certain way. So I have a remote in my hand and I'm shooting pictures to hopefully document what it feels like. Um, I'm bald, so I'm, but I shave every day to stay bald. <laughs> but then I'm like, okay, do I really need to shave? So let me show what that feels like because I've never experienced this before. And I want to show that in a picture because April, today is April 28th, April 28th, 2020 will never come back again. And if you record that moment, you've documented your history, your time here on earth, your time here during this crisis. This picture today is just a picture, but tomorrow, it becomes more precious as we go on. So I kept going. I, here I have like my little stubble there and I'm attempting to shave. You know, have fun with this. You can do anything you want, but you should not just be letting every day pass by without shooting something that shows the world how you feel. Get out there, try it. Maybe you'll never use the picture or not. Maybe you'll never show it anywhere, but maybe you will. And maybe it will connect with people. So here I did another version because every time I walk out of my place and come back in, I wash my hands. I probably wash my hands more in the last eight weeks than I have in who knows in a year because you're washing your hands all the time. So I want to show what that felt like. So here I have the mask on 
and I have my hands with, with foam because I've been washing my hands. And I want to show what that feels like. So every day I've been doing something like this and I will continue to do more ideas. And I push myself to, to try to do something that feels like that day. So this is my challenge to you. Try to shoot something every day, no matter where you are in the world, that feels like your experience right now. Have fun with this. I love this because I can just jump in the, on one, dive in, drop it in, and make it feel the way I want it to feel. So here I am just doing my hands. I want to get an image of just me washing my hands. And when I'm washing hands, it's funny because in, in Japan, they play this song. So last week was my birthday. And I saw the commercial for the first time last week on the 21st of April. And the, the TV commercial, they're singing happy birthday. When I first heard it, like, what is this commercial? And they sing the entire happy birthday song twice. And it's a way to teach children how to wash their hands. So if they sing happy birthday twice, they've washed their hands sufficiently. And that's what they want everyone to do. So you're now hearing that happy birthday tune all over the place as they try to push people to wash their hands. So in this picture, I'm showing my hands being washed, but you also you're seeing suds going everywhere because I'm washing my hands, hands diligently. Here I am showing another version of it. Now, the reality of this is I'm shooting on a black background and I'm trying to show what it feels like to wash your hands all the time. But I am taking creative license. The reality of this image is just this. My hands, I have my light, um, and I'm shooting my hands on a black background. But it doesn't have the feeling that I want to give by having suds going everywhere. So I want to I go into on one again, and I use the same weather app. And even though you may think about this as being snow, because this part is actually a part of accumulation in the on one app, but does it have to be? It can be anything you want it to be. And this is the fun of photography. So this weather app was made to be weather. But you can interpret things to be whatever you want them to be. In this case, it's not snow for me. It's suds as I go through and I put on the, the accumulation to show, in my case, in this case, being suds going everywhere to show the feeling of what it feels like to me to wash my hands over and over again. So be creative with this. Take pictures every single day. And don't take it for granted. Figure out what you're doing. If you're, if you're just sitting home watching movies all day, shoot that. If you're on your computer all day, shoot that. Find something to document that shows your life because you are changing every single day. Every single day, we are getting older. It may not feel like it, but we are. Document that day and make it fun for you. Okay, now let's go through some tips for shooting at home. So I shot in a lot of homes. Um, I used to live in Los Angeles, so this is a shoot I did actually in Los Angeles. And also, let me stop for a second. How many of you have gone and looked through your archive of images since you've now been at a stay at home order for the last few weeks. Some of us have been here for seven, eight weeks, maybe some four for a month, whatever the case, how many of you have gone through, I see the hands being raised, going through your archives. So many of us are doing that. I know I've been doing it every day and I'm finding images that I've forgotten about. I'm going through and I'm putting in on one and I'm changing them around and, and I'm having a lot of fun doing that. So I'm gonna show you guys a shoot I did a while ago, but this was so much fun. And it reminded me of what we can do to, to have fun in photography. I have friends from all over the world and some are telling me that you know they feel a little bit lonely. Maybe it's just them and their husband or their wife, their boyfriend or girlfriend, or maybe they're just by themselves. 
So what can you do to have fun in this moment? Let me go deeper into this. So think about your lights that you have. If you have lights, think about how big of a light can you put up in your home? Maybe you have a big umbrella or maybe you have smaller umbrellas or maybe you have a softbox or a beauty dish or whatever modifiers you have. Think about what you can set up in your home. Maybe you don't have any light and maybe you just have light coming through a window, but look for light because well, for great photography, we need light. So find out where you have beautiful light and make your images come to life. And then have fun. It doesn't matter if you have a big space or a small space, have fun. Here I am in my old apartment in Los Angeles and I've set up a, a backdrop inside my place and I'm having fun. You know, it, you don't have to be in a great big space. When I lived in New York, I lived in a small space and because everybody does. Well, actually here I am in Tokyo and everything in Tokyo is small <laughs> as well. But you learn how to make things come to life. Have fun. That's the joy of photography. Now let's get down to the shoot. This, this is the fun stuff. So pay attention. You're going to want to figure out how to do this shot for sure. So I told you earlier, I used to shoot for America's Next Top Model. I was on the show uh, several times, sometimes as a judge, sometimes as a photographer. On this episode, I had to shoot, uh, I believe it was like uh, 10 different models who were competing against each other. And we did a series where we had to shoot them, the same model being two different people. So here we have somebody pretending to be, sadly, um, a politician that's here in America and his wife. And so I had to shoot this model first as one character. Then they went and changed not only their clothing, but their hair and makeup came back again. And I shot the second image. Now, in that time, I'm shooting other models as well. So I've got to make sure I can come back and do my image where it looks exactly the same. So I'm marking where my tripod is. Everything's locked down. So I can go back and set it up exactly and shoot this person in the same place. Now, if that sounds confusing, let me just go into detail and show you exactly how I've done this and how you can do this at home. So here I am in a home and I'm doing to go through the whole process of what I've done to create the image like you've just seen, but I'll do a different version. So imagine you are at home. Well, you don't have to imagine we are all at home right now, right? So this is a living room. It's not a big room, but it's very intimate. And I have two umbrellas here. So those two white objects you see on the side, right and left, those are two umbrellas. They're shoot through umbrellas. And I normally don't use umbrellas to light situations, but this is the best tool in this situation. So here's another version show you where you can see I had the shoot through umbrellas and I pulled off part of the black. So I'm modifying the umbrellas. I'm not shooting them in the traditional way. So also when you are shooting, you don't have to shoot in the traditional way. Whatever modifier you have, you should adapt it, change it, and see what works for you. Just because it comes one way doesn't mean you have to use it that way. So here you'll see I have two white umbrellas with the black covers, but they are removable. So I've taken off half of the black so I can have a modified version of an umbrella. So here's the situation. I want to shoot a family dinner, but right now we are in a place where we can't have people over. We're, we're having distance from our friends and our family, but how can you show having a great time even while we are in this situation? This is the joy of photography. We can do anything. So let me go through how I made this image come to life because this is absolutely doable today as we all go through this crisis. So imagine you want to celebrate, maybe it's your birthday coming up next week or next month, or you have a celebration, an anniversary, and you want to share it with friends. 
you can do what I am about to show you. And this will be so much fun. So you can set up a table, have chairs around for your friends, no matter where they are in the world. Imagine they are somewhere else, but you want to have a dinner, invite all your friends over. So set your table, make the food, put the chairs there for them. And let's go through this whole process. So here I have in on one, I put through this shoot. I have a celebrity family. This is Angela Bassett and her husband, Courtney Vance. They're both actors, actually very big actors in America. And I want to do this shoot that shows what it feels like to have a full table full of people. Now you just see just two people here, but stay with me. So let's go closer into one image. Here I have them, and I've, now they're the actors, so I can tell them I want them to pretend. I want to first check my focus. Let me just make sure I have everything in focus here. Great, okay. So when I love on one I can do this. I can see how much is in focus. Now that I've seen that, I can turn that off, my show focus mask. Love that tool. I want to have a lot of depth of field. So I have them pretending that they are talking to a room full of people. So I'm directing them. <laughs> I love these guys. I mean, it's great shooting actors and because they are great at, at acting. So I told them to pretend that there are people all around. And we had fun doing that series. <laughs> a little bit too much fun here, actually. <laughs> but I want them to have fun. So they're pretending the room is full of people, that they're about to serve dinner. Now, even though there's nobody there, it doesn't mean, it doesn't be, have to be that way in the final image. So I set this all up. I am on a tripod. I'm going through a range of pictures so I can find the best image. And there are all these work, actually. I mean, there's so many great ones here. Everything kind of works. But the fun of this is in you pretending. So, okay, you've seen that part now. Let me go to the next phase of this. So then I had them change clothes and come back with their children. So now the family's going to be all on the left side of the table, all sitting down. This is the second part of, of this image. They're all going to sit down on this side and pretend they're talking to somebody across the table. You've seen the first part. Now we're on the second part. The parents have changed clothes. They brought their children in. And now I can go through and direct all of them. See, mom and dad are great at pretending but the kids are having an amazing time because they've never seen their parents do something like this at home, act silly, put their guard down. So the kids had a ball doing this. Now imagine you doing this at home. Maybe you're by yourself. You can do the same thing at home. You can change four, five, six times and make a dinner with just you. Imagine how much fun that would be. You'll never forget this and this time as we all go through this, this time together. Have fun with this. So I go through, I shoot that, then I have them all change again. Now this is the third time for the parents to change, second time for the children to change. <laughs> I love Courtney and Angela, they're amazing. So the parents are like, the kids are like, what are we doing? But I had them change again and come back and we're gonna sit on the other side in a second here. So now they've changed clothes and they're now on the other side. So are you are now starting to get this? As I shoot this, I'm gonna put this all together in post, but the kids have no idea. The parents have slightly an idea because I showed them a sketch of what I want to do and they're getting it and they're falling into it. And all of these images work so well. I had so much fun with this. And as you can tell, there's a lot of preparation here. I mean, we had to cook all the food. It was all, this is real. This is, you know, all this food. There's, you know, the glasses of setting the table. It's a lot of work. But this moment, this picture will become priceless for this family going on forever. So here I am at the very end, you know, now showing them 
uh, I think we've got enough images where I can pull three images that all work together. There's definitely something in here. I've done this, I've shot phase one, phase two, and phase three. And it was a lot of fun. So, okay, now let's see. This is the final image, all put together. I shot the first phase of just the parents by themselves with the turkey. Then I went through and found the right image. Then I went through and shot them again, all on the left side of the table, pretending they're talking to themselves on the other side. You got the picture. I mean, this is it. This was so much fun. These children are going to remember this forever. If you're at home with just your family and you have children, your kids would love this. If you're bored at home, this will give us this break, this something amazing for the entire family to do. So whether you're by yourself or where you're with, you know, uh, just one other person or you're with a big family, have fun and try this. All you need is a tripod and your camera and of course lights. Have fun, then put it into on one, find your best images and voila, you have this image. Go and make it your own and put, put a spin on it. Maybe everybody has a mask on for dinner. Have fun with this. You are the director. You can do anything you want. Okay, this day, I didn't stop here. We did other versions. We're like, okay, imagine it's Christmas or it's uh, some party and you're coming in from the party. So I want to show that process also of going through. And now these, these boxes are empty, but the kids got a big kick out of playing with these empty boxes. They want to open up the presents, but there's nothing inside. <laughs> so I'm going through, I'm shooting, getting all these, these moments to find the great moment. Once you've shot all your images, you can put them through on one and play around. So I was going through my pictures and I'm like, wow, let me go through and change these around a little bit because there's a lot I can do that I never thought about before. I can change to any preset. I can change to, to any feeling I want. You know, there are so many amazing presets here in on one. And it's up to you to decide what you want. Now, you, when you hit the effects button, you'll also see the filters pop on. You can see the filters here on one side, but you can also enable them by going and playing with them any other way on the other side. If I want to just enhance the red, they have on a lot of red, I can go through and enhance the red. When I first shot this, I didn't have this ability, not like this. Now I do. So I'm going through finding pictures I've shot in the past and making them better. And this is fun. Now, I mentioned this earlier about the slider. You can change the amount you want. Say if I add red and it's too intense, I can change the slider and take it down and take it down to 50% if I want or 90% or 80%. It's totally up to you what you want to do. I can also add a second layer and do a separate color like the green, the reef on the door. Now, this was not shot at Christmas time. So we're faking all of this to make it feel like the holidays. You can do this right here in April if you want to, but make it feel like another time of year. Totally up to you. As a photographer, you have creative license. Had fun with this. Figure out what you can do. Have fun. Pull your camera out and get to work. All these options are available to us. And I got to say thank you to On One for, for making it fun for all of us to go through our, our new pictures or our, our archive and see pictures done in a different way, with a different spin. Here they are in a situation where it's all shot on white. So I love the vignette. I love using vignette a lot because I can go through and, and close down some of this, this white that's all around them and make the focus really on them. Do you see how that vignette works? I love that right there. The big softy vignette softens the, the white roof and around the sides because that part really is not important. I want to make them the hero. And the vignette brings the energy right to them. 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. They were turning it on makes a big difference. I love that. Another sip of my, my coffee here. You find what you want it and you export it and you are good to go. Now, let me just go through and show you one more thing here as well, because I love this part. I think this is very good to have. Let's go through here. Make sure I have that running there. Is that working there? There we are. Okay. So now you see I've found my picture that I like the best. I'm going to go through and show just that one image. I love the, the, the son there who's like, you know, screaming and having a great time. But now I can go through and make it anything I want. I worked before in this area, but let's go back over to this, this left panel where you have all the presets. And I mentioned earlier, if I hit the effects tool here on the right, you'll see filters pop through. So I'm gonna hit that right now. So let me turn it off and on for a second so you can see that again. If I'm in develop mode, you don't see that. But when I go to effects, then that filter pops off on the left. I can hit that and you have all these, I love the borders. You have all these, these different filters in here from, from blur to black and white to bleach bypass to blur to borders, all of these tools to play with and make your image look the way you want it to look and feel. Again, I love the borders. Look at this one. I can change it like an old fashioned film image with the sprockets like 35 millimeter film. If I want to add an Ansel feel to it, there's a different, we have all these different borders that change the look and feel. I love this one, this antique deco, it looks beautiful. You can send this picture off online and give a feeling of a print or this antique rounded edges. I mean, there's so many great ones in here. Put your images in, put your images in and play around and bring an old image to life by making it look new again. Or make a new image look older. I love playing with the emotion uh, borders here. These are just so great. But ones I really love are these old fashioned ones. Like here, here we have like a minute, uh, movie cinema camera feel older. You have the sloppy borders, which I've always loved the sloppy borders, like a, an old four by five or eight by 10 film image. I love those. And there are tons of sloppy borders to choose from. So it's not the same, just one version. You have many to choose from, um, over 20 as a matter of fact, to choose from with different types of sloppy borders. Thank you on one for that. I really love the tin type. So you got to find the right image, but the tin type is really cool to play around with. So find an image that you love. Maybe it's a picture of a family member um, and do the tin type on them. It's a great, great look. I love adding more of a punch to it. So I'll go through and add dynamic contrast to that and just to make it a little stronger. I can even go through and do more if I want. Here I am turning on and off so you can see what that looks like. But let me just go through and add another to really punch it. I'm going to add two different layers of dynamic contrast. If it's too much, just take your slider and dial it down a little bit. I absolutely love this tintype, playing around with this and making it feel the way a tintype image should look. Again, you've got to find the right image but these options are all available to us. So dive in and have fun. Use the presets, use the filters, use the effect that makes your image feel the way you want it to look. And you have tons of options, so get in there and play around. We're all looking at our images right now, so find the right image, find the right filter, and have fun. Or if you want, just make it your own. Have fun, make it feel the way you want to feel. We're all in this together now. Get in there and have fun. Okay, let me just turn this off and go to the next phase here because that's the image again, playing with nothing on it at all besides just having my, my uh, vignette going on. But I love the feel of this. You go through and make your images feel alive. Have fun with them. Okay, 
let's have more fun at home with photography. So my very last photo shoot before this hit, I was on a trip to Vegas and I want to shoot in a shower. So I have my light. So here you have a light and then there's a bathroom, of course, in every house in the world. So anybody can do this. So I want the model to get wet and I want to have this feeling that she's been caught in the rain. So again, I have my light. This is what I'm using. This is a, a light that's actually made for being wet. This light can, can be out in the rain. It can get uh, wet. It's uh, made by light in motion. And here's my model who I shoot all the time whenever I'm in Vegas. So here's the set. I put together a black background and there's two shower heads coming down. So she's actually getting wet. But this is what it looks like in reality. Now, I want this to feel like she's been caught outside at night in a rain shower. So how do I make it feel that way? This is reality. But again, like I showed you earlier with the cherry blossoms, as a photographer, you have creative license to do anything you want to do. So let's go through this. So this is me making it feel the way I want to feel. Again, reality. There's two shower heads coming down, but this is the way I want to feel. How do you get from here to here? Let's take this apart again. So I can shoot with this light to show the motion. So I can change my shutter speed where I can either freeze the water or have a little bit of motion. And I felt like it's better to have a little bit of motion. So I'm shooting at like a 60th of a second with my, with my shutter speed to get a little bit of motion with the water. But then I go through, put it again and on one. And guess what? On one photo raw 2020 is absolutely amazing. I'm back in the weather app. So here on the left side, you see this normal shower image on the right side. I've cleaned up her skin. I've added a little more detail to the red and I've added a little more rain through my weather app. And I absolutely love this in such a big, big way. I love that I can change the direction of the rain. I can have it coming down on the right, coming down on the left. I can have it drizzle or I can have it rain. So drizzles thinner, lighter then rain is stronger. If I want, I can even double, put another layer of drizzle so I can have it stronger. You can have as much as you want. It's totally up to you. You make it feel the way you want your image to feel. That's the great thing about On One. It gives us a tool to make your pictures come alive. You can do this picture at home right now. So here I have it going straight. Again, it's coming from the right here. Another sip of my, of my coffee there. See the rain's coming from the right here. Here it's coming straight down. You can change the direction. So again, on the left you have drizzle. We can see it's a little smaller. On the right, I have rain. And as you go through the app, you'll see there's different versions. There's, there's rain from the left, rain from the right. There's drizzle from the right, left, drizzle from the, from the left, or coming straight down. You have all those options totally available to you. And you can add all of them together if you want. Now remember, as you are shooting, you have to be the director and think about how you want your image to look and direct your model, even though in reality, it's just coming down a little bit but you want your picture to feel like it's coming down everywhere. So you have to direct your models all the time. It's not just shooting, you are creating, creating the look, the feeling. So have fun with this. I love this in such a big, big way. So here we are again, I wanna go through and go really go through this. So take a good look at the rain and the feeling. I do like having her hair be wet because 
I think if she's not wet, it feels fake. But this way, it feels real. So let's go through this process again. So here I'm going through on one. I've got to find the right images. And I love how easy it is to make my selections in on one. I go through, I get my five stars or my red mark, whatever you want to do to find your favorite image. Let's go through here for a second and see how this goes through. So here I'm going through, and there are a lot of great images. Which one is the right one? I'll go through, look, try to find that best image, make that selection. That one feels right. So now what do we do? I want to see, okay, again, what's in focus. So I'll show my focus mask. The green shows me what's in focus. I see her face, her eyes, even the rain is in focus there. I can find out that I have exactly what I want. Let it load there. There we are. I feel good with that. Now, again, I'm shooting at my slow shutter speed or slow-ish, like a 60th of a second. So now I go through and start playing around. So let's go through and tweak this image. So here I go to my develop, just go up a little bit on the contrast and make that darker black. So I want Miss feel like she's outside versus uh, being inside on a black background, which she is of course, but I want to feel like she's outside, being caught in the rain, caught in a shower. So you can have these other ways of looking at this image in your develop module. There's this automatic or there's this manual I wanted to have control over this. So I'm going to, have to keep it on manual. Boost my contrast just a little bit more. That looks good. Now let's jump into our effects. And I'll add this filter. So here's where you find all your filters. I'll go through and add a little color enhancement. I'll show that here. Open it up. I'll hit the red. Bam. Just a little punch of red there. In her garment, just to give it a little bit of a kick. Let's see what it looks like off. It's slight, but it comes alive with that little kick of red. And I love that. So let's go back in there again. I can reduce the co that color on the skin by just making sure I click that button there. You have so much control in on one. Now, okay, I'll hide that. Let's get back in here again and now go through and let's go down to add a little bit of contrast there. Punch it up just a, a little bit. Let's take that, show that a little bit there. On and off, off, on. That looks good there. If it's too much again, you can take it and slide it down if you want to. We're at 100% right now, full. Let's take it down just a little bit. You decide where you want it to be. You are the director. Okay, that looks kind of good. On and off, that's nice. I love twitching it on and off so I can see exactly where it is. You're not locked in to anything. You have total control. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Let's now go. We'll hide that again. That looks, that looks good there. I'll hide that. We'll go back into playing around for more filters. Let's add another one. Let's go down and add a little bit more color here. Your color balance. You have control over everything here. Your hue. The amount. What I love about all of this is that you can play around and make it anything you want. And don't be afraid to make a mistake because if there's something you don't like, you just go and turn it off. But you have all of these options. And it doesn't destroy anything. That's kind of cool. Turn it on and off, see what we like. Or if we don't like it, we just delete it. Simple as that. That's kind of cool there. And you have all these options again, 
all the way down on all your your sliders and that code's kind of crazy there, but you just you just have all these options to play around with. And I love that about this. Now let's go through and that's kind of cool, but I want to take this now and go into yeah, that's nice there. That's nice. About that amount. Okay, on and off, so you can see what you've done. We'll hide that. And now we get down to the nitty gritty. At the very bottom here, you know, you'll see vignette, which I always add that in because I still want to add a little bit of vignetting here. What's not important, you don't need. So I'll try to take all the attention away from the edges. So the eye goes right to the center. And in this image, even though she's on black, the vignette really, really helps quite a bit. I like the big softy there. That's again, really, really nice. It brings all the attention right to her. That's nice. <clears throat> and again, you get all these options on what you can do with all these different uh, vignettes. Find the one that's right for you. You can even change the size of it. You find that once you like, you can still change the size to make it exactly where you want it to be. I like that quite a bit. Again, on and off. I always take it on and off so I can see exactly what I've done. I think that feels good. We'll go and hide that now. That feels right there. Now we're gonna, yeah, we have always, we have four different um, layers we've added now. Now, let's make it a little better on terms of our skin. If we want to do that, we just jump onto the portrait part. Let it find her face. Takes about a second or so. Jump in, I'll hit skin. And then I'll just go and do a little bit of adjusting here. That's nice. You find what's right for you. Smoothing makes it really beautiful. And by the way, there's a new version of On One that came out today. So for those of you who are all on On One, if you haven't done your update, make sure you do that today. There's a brand new version that just came out a few hours ago, as a matter of fact. So update your version to have the latest and greatest. So you find your skin, get it where you want to be. I'm usually in there. You can also add the eyes if you're doing like a close up, the eyes and the mouth if you're doing close up. If you're around three quarters like this, I'd probably not do the eyes and the mouth, but if you're closer, those work very, very well. So I'll go do my skin. I'll hide that now. That's kind of good, I think. I'll take that one off. Yeah, there we are, just like that. Let's go back into our effects for a second. Once you have it all down, again, you just play around, you find out where you want to be. You turn it on and off to make sure you have it just right. Go back into our effects. We'll add another filter. We'll drop all the way down into weather. This is where we get to have a lot of fun. So see this coming from one direction here, coming kind of down and on this other one. So I'll go and show the weather app. And here I can go through and start adding different types of weather, like the drizzle here. Now it's come to life. Drizzle from the left, drizzle from the right, drizzle straight. It now changes the image quite a bit and it's come alive. Now it's not a shower in, in a bathroom, now it's looking like actual rain coming down. You change the amount, you can change the scale, I mean, you have total control of your weather. Now, here I am bringing it in closer. Look at this. You can scale your rain. This is so cool. 
it's totally up to you. You have total control over everything. Have fun with this. Play around with it. I'm going to move on for this for a second because I want to go and show other stuff here while we have time. The time flies by so fast, but this is so much fun. When I found these images and, and this, you know, this module, I start playing around and I was doing it for, for a long time, just playing around and you can do the same thing. So imagine you have this, this concept that you want to do with this weather, playing around with it while you're home. Make some beautiful images so when this is all over, you have fresh, new, amazing images to show. And guess what? As you're doing this, you want to be more creative in the future because you now know all the tools you have to play with. That's how I got to this one. I found my image. I, her head's up, so I think coming from straight down was better. <coughs> I turned it into black and white. I'm talking so much, I'm losing, getting hoarse here. <coughs> but you find your image and you make it come to life. Here again, just having fun. Black and white or color, it's totally up to you. I think black and white makes it more timeless because you know, the color makes you feel like a certain time. But play around, add a filter, add a border. It's your image, make it what you want to be. Change your perspective. So I shot all these other images with a fairly wide lens, but then I changed and went to a tighter 105 lens. Tighter. And played around and had even more fun. So here we are again, playing around, getting more of this. Tight, beautiful. But again, you can do it in color or in black and white. I shot it in color, of course. But then I turned it to the image that I love the most into black and white. Have fun. To me, it looks like she's outside and it's nighttime and the skies opened up. And here it's April in Japan and it rains a lot. We've had a lot of rain this month. So I love this image. It feels like what's going on right now for me. So you find your images come to life, have fun, take pictures, whether it's, you know, maybe you want to shoot your kids in, in the bathroom, uh, in the tub or whatever, just have fun. They would love this. Play around, make your images come to life. Have fun playing with On One, guys. My name is Matthew Jordan Smith. You can find me on Instagram under Matthew Jordan Smith. I love photography. I know you guys do too. Thank you for your time for being here today. Thank you on one for giving me this time to talk and share the joy of photography. Have fun, guys. Hey, thank you so much, Matthew. That was an awesome presentation. And I know that we have a few questions here, if you don't mind sticking around. For Absolutely. Just a totally sure. Cool. Real quick, because I have got asked many times, this is being recorded. It'll be posted to the website real soon. And yes, it'll be free for everybody to watch on the video library. Okay, uh, question, Matthew. Deborah says, I'm teaching a photography merit badge on Thursday uh, for Scouts BSA in the Monterey Bay area. Any suggestions on some good points to share with the youth? Yes, yes. I always love to tell people this. To find, don't just shoot what everybody else shoots. Find your own point of view. Say there's 50 people in the room and they all have the same assignment. The joy in photography is finding your point of view, the way you see it. It could be a simple assignment like, okay, shoot, a, shoot an apple. But you don't have to just take a picture of an apple that's sitting on a table. You can do it any way you want to. Maybe one person's biting into the apple. One person had a picture of a, an apple on the ground that's just split open. You find your way to shoot from your point of view. So people who are young, who are just getting into photography, people love to emulate what they see. And I understand that's great to like to covet what you see and, and bring that image to life and learn how to do something. But then once you learn photography, put your spin on it, put it 
in your point of view. That's when it makes a huge difference. Excellent. And we've got a lot of thank yous. Hey, Matthew, how much time do you spend? Um, should, how much time should I spend to plan to learn all the aspects and features that you are showing? It seems that you spend much more time than I do. <laughs> I, I love photography. I could do it all day, every day. Uh, and often I do. Um, in terms of time, it's totally up to you. Um, make sure you feel comfortable, number one. But the more time you devote to this art form, the more it's going to give back to you because it's given back to me over and over and over again. I'm doing what I love. And during normal times, I'm, I'm flying a lot. I travel back to the States like 11 times a year, usually. Um, for the last three years, I've been going back, you know, 11, 12 times a year. And I love that. Now that's for work. But even when it's not work, like even right now, I'm loving this. So the time you devote to photography to learn, it will give back to you in dividends. Definitely. And thank you, Matthew. Again, appreciate you coming on, sharing your wisdom with us and your inspiration. It's been awesome. Uh, we planned this webinar a long time ago, and um, I'm glad we were able to, to do it. Uh, actually, some cool news from On One, too. Here to uh, capstone this presentation today, we announced the availability of On One 360. It will be in late June. 360 is our new end-to-end -end photography solution for capturing, editing, and accessing photos seamlessly between multiple computers and mobile devices. There's a ton of information on our website. Head over to onone.com. You can't miss it. It's right there on the homepage. Again, Matthew, I will uh, turn it over here over to you to sign off, but I really do appreciate you coming in and sharing your wisdom and inspiration with us today, and uh, I'll let you take it from here. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. Photography is so much fun. Don't get lost in just the tech. Don't get lost in just the gear. Understand that the gear is going to change over and over and over again. It's going to get better and better, but it will never replace you, your vision. Have fun. Show the world how you feel with your pictures. All right, guys, enjoy this. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Get out there. One more shoot. question, Matthew. I'm sorry. I got to get it oh, in. Yeah, okay. Rainy wants to know. I'm sorry. She can't. Uh, Rainy comes in and asks, uh, what is one thing you can say for a beginning photographer to focus on when building their portfolio? Oh, yes. Yes. So one thing to focus on when building your portfolio is to find one thing that you really love about photography. I think one of the biggest mistakes people do is trying to do everything. And you can't be great at everything. You can be decent at everything, but if you focus on one thing you really love versus what you like, and just do that one thing and put that in your portfolio, people who love that same thing, whatever that is, will come to you. If you're trying to do everything, if you're trying to please everybody, you're gonna please nobody because People want somebody who's a specialist, not a generalist in photography. If you're just doing everything, you might get work here and there. But if you specialize and specialize in what you really love doing, not like, you'll work a lot more and you'll have a lot more fun and you'll never work a day in your life. That's good advice. Thank you so much, Matthew. I know we're out of time here again. Appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thank you for attending. The uh, recording will be posted here shortly. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take care.